All right, everyone. Welcome back to another episode here on the Fit Father Project podcast. Again, my name is Dr. Anthony Balduzzi. I'm the founder here at the Fit Father Project, the host of this podcast, and I'm super excited and honored today to have a friend and a dear program member, and I'll truly say a veteran of the Fit Father Project, almost three years strong today, Dustin Reekman. Thanks for coming on the show, my friend. Uh, to kick this off, I would love for you to introduce yourself, your name, your age, where you're from, a little bit about your family, and then I want to get into your origin story and how you found the Fit Father Project. Yeah, absolutely. Dr. Anthony, it's a, a real honor to be on with you. I'm ecstatic. I've got to listen to a few of the previous interview episodes, and it's literally like listening to brothers. It's Yes, I knew these guys' stories, but to hear it go in depth, um, and, and it's like, I know that guy, you know, it's, it's kind of a funny feeling to hear them being interviewed. Um, so yeah, I'm Dustin Reekman. I live in a town called Glen Carbon, Illinois. It's a suburb of St. Louis, Missouri. Um, I'm almost 42. I'll be 42 next month. And yeah, I've got a beautiful wife and three kids, uh, ranging from 16, which is hard to say, uh, down to 11. Nice. Busy house. Very and busy house. you have, uh, <laughs> I believe... I know a little bit about your family, but two girls and a boy. You got it. And so, yes, yeah, so you got some teenagers, so you're a busy man. And I know you're also running businesses. So I think this is what I know about your story, where, really what I want to unpack, because I think it's going to be so valuable for guys. You started this program in Thanksgiving of all times <laughs> of 2018. Why'd you start? Where were you at at your life at that point in time? What was going on? Yeah. So 2018 was just a wild year. Um, I had a 18 year engineering career. So I have a master's degree in engineering, was a consultant, you know, the proverbial 50, 60 hour work weeks. I was managing people and I knew I was getting burnt out from that. Um, I'd also always had side hustles, you know, various businesses, various writing projects, creative outlets. So in 2017, I knew it was like time to, to just try, you know, like I need to go try doing this on my own. I need to get away from the engineering, at least take a break. And so I worked myself to the bone, basically kind of doing consulting at work, you know, at engineering work and then doing marketing consulting and, and growing my own businesses for really the past, the last six months of 2017, it was like two more than full-time endeavors. And of course, all the family things going on at the same time, but I did it. And so like January, 2018, I gave my notice and by February I was quote unquote free, um, at least from the engineering career. And my wife is a stay at home, was a stay at home mom. She's, she's since returned uh, to the workforce as a special education teacher, but there was a lot of pressure, right? So I'm like, I'm going to leave this great career, all the benefits to go do my own thing. My wife, you know, wasn't generating an income. And so 2018 was a wonderful year, one of the best years of my life in hindsight, but it was probably the most stressful year of my life. And so I was just grinding through that year and it was, the weight was just you know, continuing to add on, continuing to add on. I was, I was trying to still have, you know, some exercise, but I was not eating well at all. I was, you know, just, I think it was just mostly the stress, you know, it's, it's like I get a pit in my stomach thinking about those months. And so I turned 39 that July and I realized I was not in great shape, kind of heading into the fall. I'm like, I, the, I, I hear a lot of stories. I'm, I'm kind of on the younger end of maybe of some of the people in the brotherhood, but I also have a, a kind of the opposite doctor story that a lot of people have. So I decided I'd never hardly been to a doctor for a wellness check. I actually have a personal friend who is a doctor. So I was like, will you be my doctor? <laughs> and I went and got the normal blood work. But I actually went into that. And that was, you know, in that late fall 2018, where I, was, I knew I was overweight. And I knew I was very, very low in energy and just stressed to the bone. And I actually went into there hoping that my test results were going to show I had like low testosterone. So I'm like, well, you know, I'm almost 40. I'm under all this stress. That's probably why I've lost my, my mojo and why I'm so tired all the time and, and feeling so stressed. And he says, no, your numbers are perfect, man. I'm like, dang, that means it's my fault. Like, that means I have to actually do something without, you know, just replacing yeah. testosterone. So I think that was one of the, the big catalysts. Um, and then, you know, as, as, as luck would have it, as, you know, God's grace would have it, I guess. You know, I, I was listening. Yeah. I listened to a lot of podcasts, a lot of business podcasts. And I heard you and I, I heard you being interviewed by Ryan Daniel Moran on his podcast and you just struck different. Like I understood you were marketing, you were talking about your story, which is super compelling to me. Um, and I knew you were, you know, you had a business that you had, you're marketing. That's one of the reasons you're doing outreach is to let more people know about what you're doing. But again, it struck different. You seem very genuine. So I went and checked it out and I did the, the, the freebies and the, the apex seven workouts and, and the meal plans. It just made sense to me. So I said, yeah, I'm going to do this. And then my typical style would be like most people, I'll do it January 1st. But I was like, you know, I'm 
really sick of the way I feel. I'm, I was 237 pounds. I'm like the, by far the heaviest I'd ever been in my life. I said, I'm going to do it like two day, whenever I, and whenever I committed to it. So I signed up, it happened to be Thanksgiving week. I think it was like Tuesday. It was like a random, you know, Tuesday in, th- in, in November. Um, and I did it, you know, I still had Thanksgiving dinner, but I did it mm-hmm. kind of the way you advise, you know, like limiting the damage, you know, and, and mm-hmm. yeah, I guess the rest is history. We can obviously talk about all the things that happened in 2018 with business, with business and life. But in, in short, that was really it. It was just kind of the low point of my health, the high point mm-hmm. of stress and this, you know, kind of facing the fact that I actually have good health. Like I have good blood pressure. I had decent cholesterol. I don't have like excuses for why I should be fat and tired. <laughs> so I need to do something about it myself. Yeah. But you were able to find some motivation through that combination of factors. The doctor's visit helped, but in the opposite way of many guys, it was like, actually, man, these are all good, but you still feel like crap. So right. you need to make a change. And I think it's very powerful that you chose to follow through immediately during that Thanksgiving time. Um, because that's a powerful decision and I think it helped you build a lot of momentum and I know that carried you through. So tell me at this point, I imagine the stress didn't just magically vanish from your life when you started this program. So what was the beginning of your fit father journey? Like in terms of the changes you were making with your nutrition, with your exercise, sleep, hydration, et cetera. And how were you making those happen when your life was still just as busy? You know, you're starting your businesses, you're making this career shift. You still have the family you have to feed. So what kind of things did you actually start, like tangible action items? Yeah, I mean, you make a great point. If anything, the business activity, the, the, you know, the possible, the potential stress associated with that increased. Actually, 2019, I traveled more than ever uh, for one of my brands that we'll talk about. But I was still able to maintain it, maintain it, even going to 12, like four to six day long trade shows that year. Um, So what was different was the boundaries I set for myself, the, the things that became non-negotiables. Um, it, the big one would be getting up, you know, at a consistent time, you know, in my case, like five 30 and making the first thing I do my workout, because I always had great intentions. It's like, I'm going to run today, but now it's six o'clock and I'm, well, I've got something I got, I got to get this email out when I was seven o'clock and someone's texting me, they need to talk. And now it's nine o'clock and I have zoom meeting. And, and by the time you look up at six o'clock at night, there's been no workout. You've not taken care of your nutrition. So I think that doing exercise first, Having a just a, a really consistent plan to follow, um, you know, the structure of the Fit Father program. And I think especially for me, phase one, the simplicity of the workouts. It was like, look, this is going to take me 30 minutes. Like I can actually get that done. It's only going to be six in the morning at that point. Like I still have the whole day to, to get all my other tasks done. Um, the one that I don't even think about anymore, but it's completely automatic. And I think it's, it makes a huge difference in my nutrition is the morning protein shake. You know, it's, it's more than a protein shake. It's got, you know, cacao and chia seeds and, and lots of different things that just gives me that consistent morning boost. Like that's mm-hmm. always the only thing I ever eat in the morning. Um, my wife yeah. and I just celebrated our 20th anniversary. So we went away for four days to Lexington, Kentucky. I brought my blender. I brought some coconut milk and it's like, I just did yeah. it. You know, like that's what I, I just, Part of who I That's am what now. you do. Whereas that yeah. used to be a real uh, <laughs> inconsistent part of my, you know, in my day, I might have not eaten breakfast, or I might have had waffles, or I might have had chocolate chips and pancakes. Like it was random. Likewise is lunch. So for me, in the past year or two, I haven't been home alone hardly at all because my kids have been home a lot from school. But um, generally, I was working from home alone, and so it's kind of an outlet. I would go out to lunch a lot. And I wouldn't make the best choices. And, you know, if you go out to restaurants, even if you think you're eating healthy, a lot of times it's not nearly as healthy as it would be if you're eating yeah. those whole foods at home. So I basically just cut down greatly the amount of lunches out and just had very normal, consistent lunches. Not necessarily always the healthiest foods, but whole foods. Um, I also did the meal meal prepping, meal planning. So kind of Sundays became and, and remains a time where my wife and I look at the the dinners for the rest of the whole week. And then I make sure I've got proteins and things in place so I can just do an easy lunch. And what I found is yeah. it sounds kind of boring. Like, oh, I have a shake every morning and I eat like the same couple things every day for lunch. But it's actually great and it takes less time and it takes less mental bandwidth. Like I don't have to think about those yeah. things. They just happen. And then, you know, part of our lifestyle is we try to eat every night as much as possible, especially with the 16 year old not working and everything. We try to eat dinner together every night as a family. And so 
I'm not real picky about dinner, you know? So if, if we're having, you know, steak, that's great. If we're having some pasta, that's okay too. I, I just kind of, you know, we'll have pizza, but maybe instead of five mm-hmm. pieces of double pepperoni pizza, I'll have two and a salad, you know, like, and yeah. so because of that, all those were immediate changes. And so at first they seem like a big deal, but I'm looking back two and a half years, which it doesn't seem at all like it's been two and a half years. And 90% of the stuff I was started doing that first month, I just continued to do. Some of my workouts have varied. Some of my my goals as far as the things I enjoy doing for for my fitness and the, you know, the types of events I like to be in. Those things have evolved, of course, over time. So maybe I'm not doing as much resistance work as I should be or, or was, but the, the nutrition is just kind of there and I don't have to think about it much. Yeah. And the, the, the workout habit is there. I basically work out six days a week all the time. Um, nice. And it's just part of what I do now. So man, powerful stuff here. Like you really established this, this rhythm and they weren't big changes. You, you got up a little earlier and you set aside that sacred time in the morning for moving your body. You had breakfast afterwards, which is really convenient. Yep. And for you as an entrepreneur, businessman, family man, like the fewer decisions you can make around things outside of like your core things is good. It keeps you more consistent, less willpower battles. So that standardized breakfast shake, it's not a surprise I do it every single morning too, yeah. right? I mean, because it, it's, it's really good. And, and I love that you shared the fact that you dialed in those first two meals really with some meal prep, like breakfast and lunch, and you're a little more flexible with dinner. Cause I think that's a big objection. A lot of people have, it's like, Oh, I have a family, you know, my kids aren't going to eat the same way. Well, it's like, look, you don't have to be perfect. Right. You just have to make better choices clustered over a long period of time. And if you can control breakfast, lunch and get a workout in, man, you're, you're maybe 75% of the way there yep. and, and you can, you can sustain that and you got it. So that's really powerful to hear. How did your fitness change? You know, you started around 237, right? Yep. Around that weight. Yep. And I know you got down to around 200 at like the low weight after going through the Fit Follower 30X, all the phases of the, the fat loss program. What was the progress like with your changes in your fitness and your well being? Because I imagine the workouts when you started them were fairly tough. We hear yeah. guys talk about, you know, their first Apex 10, that metabolic workout in the first phase of Fit Follower 30X. And they're like, whoa, man. Like, I thought this was going to be easy. It was tough. It's simple, but it's tough. How did your fitness change as you started moving your body more? Yeah, it's really, it's, it's funny you say that I'm, I'm kind of looking over on my other screen because I, I've kept a journal for like the first 300, almost full year, like 340 days. I would check in, I was getting body scans, but day one, November 19th, 2018, my weight, my waist size that I took photos and I wrote, did apex 10 workout with 20 pound dumbbells. I made it to 10. And then had to quit because I felt like I was going to pass out. Um, and then one month later in, in December, dominating Apex 10 with 25 pound dumbbells, finished under 30 minutes. Big five workouts are good. You know, so it's, it's just that's one month. And yeah. I went from basically one month. Not being able and to that's finish. up and down. Yeah. You went up and down. So like you doubled your work with more weight in yeah. one month. And I remember always posting mm. in, in our brotherhood, you know, Facebook group. I, it was like shocking to me because I'm fairly analytical. You know, I think in systematically that I had this, I have these journals and I'm like, how is it possible that I was like 45 minutes two days ago and now I'm 41 minutes, you know, finishing these workouts because you're kind of in some of the workouts, the metabolic workouts, you're basically competing against yourself for time. And it was like, it blew my mind how quickly some of this progress came. And I loved showing those, you know, those photos um, and just, Cause I knew that I was pushing myself just as hard to, to, you know, with the intensity, but like the, the minutes were just dropping like crazy. Um, mm-hmm. so that's kind of the snapshot of that first month, but in general, it's funny, like my, my background, I had hated running. I played football in high school, but never, never enjoyed the running part. So I think it was around 2012, my brother-in-law, who's much younger than me, asked me to be on this Tough Mudder team. And so if people aren't familiar with Tough Mudder's an obstacle course. They're usually about a half marathon in length, like 18, 20 obstacles, fairly taxing. You're not running constantly, but you need to have good cardiovascular health. And like, I told him I'd do it, kind of the bravado. I'm like, well, yeah, you know, he's my little brother-in-law. He's not going to show me up. Yeah. So then I realized what I, the mistake I had made because I like, I don't run at all. So I could not run a mile. And that's the honest truth. And I took off running. And this our was before the program? What's that? Yeah. Yeah. You couldn't run a mile before the program. Oh yeah. And this yeah. is like 2012. So yeah. I did it though. And I, and I finished the tough mutter. So this is just to give people an idea of my, I guess my abilities that, that, and everyone's abilities in there that are not tapped. So like two years later I ran a marathon. So I went from not being able to run a mile to running a marathon. This is all before fit okay. father project, but 
And then I ran some more half marathons. So like I had a base of fitness, but the, the and, and if I look back, I've, you know, charted my weight for like 10 years, very analytical again, but um, mm-hmm. so I can look in this app and it's like up and down and up and down. I'd be 220 and that'd be 200. I'd be 220 and I'd be 200, like every year, every six months. And so the, this was different though. Cause when I was like, I wasn't 220, I'd blown way past that. I'm at 237. I hadn't been running. And so it, that's what's amazing to me. Like my looking back, I've basically been between 200 and 205, 90% of the time, you know, since I got there that first time I'll have occasional times where I'm like 210. I'm sitting here today. I'm probably closer to 210 because why well, I am, cause I weigh myself every day. Um, because we had that weekend away in Lexington, it's been a, you know, it's been a stressful week, but I know by next week I'll be back to 205. Right. And, and if I was training for an event, I'll be down to 200. So that's like, I I'm very goal oriented and achievement driven. And so that can work really harshly with some people with, with me, with my psychology. Cause it's like, Oh, I messed up once I quit or, well, now if I, if I miss my training run, I'm just not going to do that race. Like there's this perfectionism. So what the program has helped me do is realize that like, no, I, I've got sacred parts of my routine and I've got kind of sacred boundaries and where I want to be with my weight and my fitness, but there's some flexibility there. Like this is my whole life. This is not, I, I you know, can't just get everything done in one month. So mm-hmm. yeah, since then, um, I mentioned some of my fitness goals changed uh, when we started having shutdowns and things with, uh, with the pandemic last year. I really just turned heavy into running as like an outlet because I was stuck in my house with three kids and my and my wonderful yeah. wife who was teaching virtually from home. It was maddening because I like I'm used to working alone in the house. So I would go on long runs frequently um, at any time of the day, even if it was hot out. So I dropped down below 200 and I actually ran my fastest half marathon time last year um, nice. by myself because the race I was supposed to be in uh, got canceled. So I just did it on my own. And so I was pretty, really proud of that though. Like I'd always wanted to get under two hours and I ran like 150, like it was substantially better. Nice. And yeah. And so then last fall I did a, I did a four day backpacking trip out in Wyoming, uh, very rugged and stuff I would have never dreamed of doing. I had no interest in doing. Um, and so I, I don't know, I, I guess you're asking me about kind of my fitness. It's, it's always been like up and down. It's been very event focused. Now it's much more consistent. So like I could, I ran a trail half marathon race like a month ago and I honestly barely trained for it. I probably was not that responsible of me, but I'd ran, I, I knew I could do it. So it was like, ah, it's not gonna be my fastest time. But I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do it. So I'm going to train for a few weeks heading into that. And the base level of fitness is just kind of there now. A couple things I want to pull out there because there's a lot of great stuff in there. One, you're an analytical guy. You like to track. Yeah. It is so important if you're that type of guy that you get these tracking systems in place because it ends up seeming like it's your guardrails where you know those those it's like the course corrections like the plane is drifting off course you don't do a full U-turn you just kind of hit this bumper and you're able to course correct. So the daily weighing we're huge proponents of and I'm so glad you continue to do that. Yeah. And now also I love that you have the confidence in your system They're like oh 210 no big deal. I'll be back to 205 in a week, you know, from cleaning up my eating, not eating out as much. Maybe I do a fast, maybe I, you know, go a little harder on some of these metabolic workouts, drink a little more water done. Like that's incredible. I'm curious because you're running your businesses at this time. How did your change in your fitness? Cause you're losing 30, 30, 37 pounds or so around yeah. there. How does that impact the way you show up with your work and your family? But let's talk about business first. Cause you have two brands and I want to shout them out. We have fire Creek snacks you guys have amazing, basically like healthy, high protein, low carb snacks that you can take on the go, which is an important part of any healthy routine. You got to know what your go-to snacks are. And you also do engage marriage stuff. You help people have better marriages and communicate better in their marriages. So you're doing these things on the side. They're starting to get more traction. How did the changes to your sacred routines impact your business life? We'll start there. Absolutely. It was a direct positive impact. I mean, it was, it gave me so much more self-confidence, mental clarity, you know, again, the consistency of getting it done in the morning and not having to think about it, this, the, basically the time I, I gained back by not having to think about my first two meals of the day. Um, I've, mm-hmm. I've kind of evolved into this every, constant intermittent, intermittent fasting. I mean, I basically eat usually my shake. I usually work out fasted and I have a shake at like mm-hmm. 10 and we usually get dinner at like nice. six and that's kind of my eating window. Um, so again, it's like, I used to put so much thought and effort into eating and like planning meals, um, that they all had to be individual. So 
there's, there's just, I have more time, honestly, by investing this time, it actually produces more time. I have much more mental clarity. Um, and yeah, I mean, the balance of all those things, it was, uh, it's, it's, it's interesting because engaged marriage I've had since like 2009, it was always a side project. It was more or less a creative outlet in a way for us to, uh, I write and we we express our what was going on in our own relationship to help others. It was an extension of what we were doing at church. You know, we wrote a, or I wrote a book. We've done speaking. It's always been a cool thing, and it's still something that's near and dear to my heart. Fire Creek actually entered my life in 2018 at the same time all this stuff was happening. So it, it's kind of I don't know if you call it ironic or divine intervention. I don't know. It's like kind of all happened at the same time. Yeah, but whenever I left engineering, I was doing some marketing consulting for online businesses and and actually some offline businesses. It's kind of like referral stuff. Like my dentist needed marketing help, and my real estate broker, mm -hmm. and it was just like all this stuff happened that facilitated me leaving my full time job. Well, I was shopping in a meat market, and I picked up some snacks. And I ended up meeting the owner, and hit it off, and that he's now my business partner. And nice. the way it came about was I was helping him market his his butcher shops, like retail, you know, brick and mortar meat shops. And I was hoping to market those things. And then this is kind of while he was coming up with this concept for the, for Fire Creek snacks. I was like, man, you, do you need, you got to be selling these online, you know, cause that, that was my background. I knew digital marketing mm -hmm. and he's like, I really want to, I don't know how I'm like, I'll do it. And so I more or less volunteer and I build him a website and I said, like, this works out, let's work something out, but you know, let's prove the concept. Mm -hmm. And so it was in, I, I honest, honest to God, it's crazy looking back at these dates, but it was like November of 2018 when I created our Shopify site um nice and then in january of 2019 we went to our first trade show we went down to orlando florida the pga merchandise show just a madhouse so we went to 12 trade shows in 2019 more travel than i've ever done okay going to places like vegas and orlando and like places where you typically just go and destroy your diet <laughs> um mm -hmm. and so I, I i guess i just felt this great discipline that wow i could travel and do this and still attend to my family and still grow this business and then the, the, I think the third cool part of it is that Fire Creek actually fits right into the lifestyle. You know, it's like, right. You know, I kind of, I basically eat low carb. It's not like I'm strict keto, but you know, they don't have our snack sticks don't have any sugar. They're high protein. They don't need refrigerated. So I could literally throw them in a bag and be traveling or yeah. be, you know, between meetings. And they're just, they're great. Like I, in the program, we kind of limit snacking, but mm -hmm. in, in my case, a lot of times they became a meal replacement. Cause I'm like, Literally right. on the go, I could, but I could eat two snack sticks and have 14 grams of protein and, and feel good. You know, there's no artificial there's ingredients. Right so it's just yeah. the stuff that people typically think about meat sticks. You know, what was so cool and what drew me to this product and, and Ryan, my business partner, was that it was so much different. It was clean and it was consistent with this, these lifestyle changes that I was making outside of business. So yeah, the, the timing is actually kind of eerie in hindsight that it was like the month I started this program, Fit Father was the month we, we launched the website for the first time. I got chills. It all feels like so aligned and <laughs> I'm, I'm a spiritual man. So I believe that God works in, in perfect ways. And, and this really was something that was coming into your life. And I also would suspect that had you not gotten into integrity with your own health and made these changes, like it would have impacted your business in a, in, in a not positive way, but because you were, it almost seemed like it was rocket fuel where you were very aligned with, with this and integrating it. And I think that's absolutely incredible. Now for guys, I, I want to ask a tactical question here for guys who do travel a lot for work. Mm -hmm. And maybe travel's picking up now, things are opening back up, whether it's work or family vacations. How did you navigate those those times when you're away from your routine? Like, what did you do? And I, I suspect the answer is you kind of transplanted that routine on the go in, in, in you know, some ways. But like, what have been your strategies for managing things while traveling? Absolutely. Uh, number one, I travel with the things I need to make protein shakes or, you know, I'll make mm -hmm. sure I get as close to those ingredients as I can when I get there. You know, so that's, that's like literally taking the scoops of protein I need for the week and putting them in a container yeah. that's travel safe, you know, possibly bring in my blender, but if that's too much, then I might even bring a shaker cup, but making sure that that morning shake is always there. That's a huge thing. Mm -hmm. Um, there's, there were many days when I was on the road for four or five days that I didn't really have an opportunity to work out. I, I would, the trade shows would be from like six or 7 AM till six or 7 PM. And then you might have meetings before or after that, but the, by virtue of being st you're like standing and talking to people for 12 yeah. hours, that's basically a workout. You know, I've burned a lot of calories no just be being there doing that and no time to like go away and get lunch. So I, we were sampling snack sticks and I, it was like, I guess 
uh, an endorsement for the brand and I'd be sitting behind the booth eating the same snacks. It's like, they really are good guys, you know, that sort of thing. So I just, I didn't eat as much during the day. Um, you know, and you're traveling, you're having business meetings, you know, there are people are drinking, you're going out to different restaurants. I did all those things, but I would make smarter choices. So instead of drinking like six big, heavy, dark beers, maybe I have a couple of, you know, bourbons on the rocks sort of thing where you're, and you talk about that, like you can do that and limit the, limit the damage, make sure I was drinking a lot of water. And when I did have to have the opportunity, I definitely did try to get a workout in. I, I wasn't maybe motivated enough to go pump iron in a tiny hotel gym. So for me, that would be usually bringing running shoes and just either running uh, straight up running and seeing the city. Or a lot of times I do like hit workouts, you know, interval training, something I could get done in 30 minutes before or after the, the trade show day. And then, you know, still be able to enjoy the evening, still be able to go out and do top golf or, you know, whatever, some things that help, uh, <laughs> help make it feel like you're not going insane by being on the road for, for 12 weekends. So, yeah, I mean, the, a huge theme is just screaming out to be listening to you is like those, those couple sacred aspects of your routine for you, the shake was sacred. And also maybe the morning movement time is yeah. sacred and you can transplant those in different, they don't have to be location specific. And I think that's very powerful for guys to understand. Um, and also the lesson too, that in the hierarchy of importance, nutrition trumps formal workouts. Like we talk about that all the time in the program, right? I mean, you eat yeah. right. It's not like you have to exercise, you know, you're getting daily movement, you're burning calories on your feet. Like you could loot, you could leave a trade show after having lost weight, you know, with, in, in many cases. So that's yeah, really and, powerful. And another thing we talk, you know, in the brotherhood about non-scale victories and mm -hmm. I, I, this is going to sound kind of maybe weird to people, but I remember I knew I was going to these trade shows and after the first one, I realized how taxing they were. So I went and got really good shoes. And then I also got new like dress pants because in the first trade show, we could wear shorts. It was a, a golf show. Right. But a lot of these had, had regulations. You had to wear like business casual. I'm like, Oh man, I don't feel like, you know, wearing khakis all day and I got to stand on my feet. That means I have to wear dress shoes. I can't wear tennis shoes. And so I bought that, but I went out and bought like a, a bunch of new pants so I got like golf pants, basically. They're super comfortable, stretchy. Yeah, lightweight. And stretchy. I just remember I got those and my wife was like, those look good because I had lost all this weight. And I'm like, yeah, I could have no way. Like it's a whole new, it's like two belt loops tighter than I'd ever had. Like, so yeah. I'd be at these trade shows wearing these pants. And it was kind of a self-reminder. Like if I want to still fit in these by like the last day of the show, I need to eat decent and, you know, take care of yeah. myself. Like it was, that was a physical reminder. And I felt confident. I felt like I look good that I was, you know, had taken care of myself and uh, felt it, it gave me more confidence too being in that environment. Cause you're, we're selling like an impulse snack item. So we're in the snack aisle. You can imagine people are just coming down, especially midday, just looking for you know, whatever, chocolate, beef jerky, anything. And so you're kind of in carnival Barker mode, trying to get people's attention. Hey, you know, come over, try this out. It's different. It's not what you think it is, you know? And, uh, and I'm very much an introvert. So, 12 hours of that. It was like, uh, I yeah. burned, I burned, I burned a lot of energy, just the, the emotional <laughs> stress of that. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, it's funny that I, 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 they're like my trade show pants. That's why I always call them. And, uh, and I, I haven't worn them in like a year. Cause luckily I haven't had to travel, but uh, I think they would still fit, which is good news. So. Yeah. I think that's powerful. Even those physical feedback loops and reminders, you get that pair of pants and it's just reminds you to stay on track. The scale does the same thing. Yeah. I want to shift gears and, and I want to, I want to learn a little bit more about, internally how these changes that you've made through the fit father program have changed your deep relationship with maybe your family with yourself and with your future and what you want to create in the back half of your life i mean you're you're coming up on 42 my dad passed away when he's 42 i think you have a full 50 back you're you know you're midpoint right and it sounds like you're just revving the engine and getting started on great things coming how has the mentality changed and what's in store for you in the future? Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a great question. Um, my mentality, I've always been optimistic. I've always been driven and achievement oriented. I, and, and so that was all very true up until 39. And that 2018 was like, a, Oh, you know, Holy crap type. Like I was going to that doctor thinking there's something wrong with me. And it was, that's scary. And of course I have a lot of peers. I have a lot of friends, family, who are in their forties and fifties who are having significant health issues. Like I have a, a business, I do some business coaching and I had a coaching client last yesterday. Um, he's probably in his mid fifties and we're on this call and he had canceled the him and his wife and he had canceled the call the week before 
And he, I could tell he didn't look right. And he's like, I thought it, I thought I was going to die last week. He's like, my dad died at my age of kidney disease. I was up 15 pounds and I couldn't urinate. And it turned out he had some kind of major kidney infection, like super high blood pressure. And they got him on meds to you know kind of save his life. And I was like, man, I was talking to you two weeks ago and you're the happiest guy in the world out golfing. And like, yeah. So I, I guess what I'm saying is I'm hyper aware of, how blessed I am to be in the shape I'm in and have the, the vital stats and the blood pressures and the resting heart rates and things. And I, I don't take that for granted at all. So um, I try to, I try to be a good model for my kids. Uh, my wife is, she doesn't run as much anymore because she kind of had some chronic injuries, but she's constantly either cycling on the Peloton, walking, running, and our kids see that. And they're very uh, active kids. They're very healthy kids. Uh, again, we don't eat like super, super clean all the time in the house, but what I hope I've left or I'm still here, but what I hope I'm forming is a, as a real legacy that they're going to basically never have to encounter some of the, the, the negative things that I did uh, from a, from a health and self image standpoint. Some of the things that, again, I kind of just went, I felt like I was in cruise control. I've been married 20 years. I'm 42. So you can, you know, I've had a lot of consistency from a family and marriage standpoint, not, not without hard work and setbacks, of course. Um, but I kind of always took my health for granted. It was kind of like, yeah, you know, if I can go run a marathon. I can do anything. Well, you know, two years later and you're, you know, probably couldn't run a mile again at, at the time that in 2018 when the stuff was going on. So I don't know. It was just a real wake up call. I never really thought I needed a program to follow. Um, I honestly, like in college, I was writing fitness programs for other people. I was big into like, you know, Arnold and uh, bodybuilding and things in high school. And yeah. so I kind of had always had that old school mentality and playing football. And so it's like, you know, I realized I really needed the help. And I think it made me vulnerable it, and it's made me humble uh, when it comes to my health. And then that translates into all aspects of life. So I try to be that kind of servant, humble leader to my family. Yeah. Um, definitely not perfect, but I, I think they pick up on that. You know, last, last uh, two fourth of July's ago, because last year there didn't exist, um, but our neighborhood has a 5K and our middle daughter. It's like she would be the first to tell you she's quite healthy and skinny, but she is not athletic. She has no interest in running. And she she's like, I'm going to run. And it was like in May. She's like, I'm going to run in the 4th of July 5K. And I did not even thought about the thing. I'm like, well, yeah, I'll run in it with you. And she trained and trained and trained. And she ran like really, really well. And we have a photo of the two of us all sweaty. It's miserably hot here. It's always humid and hot and uh, just covered in sweat. And she's smiling ear to ear. And I'm smiling ear to ear. And it was just a little neighborhood 5K. But that's that's the type of thing that I, I just cherish. So, yeah, that's incredible. I mean, it's obviously her seeing you go through all the training and, and, yes. you know, proactive work that seated that in her mind, no doubt. Right. I mean, yes. And it's beautiful that she brought that forth through her own initiative, you know, and that, and that's her, yeah. she owned that. And I imagine that was a, that was a big experience for her. Yeah. And she's a very goal oriented girl. And, um, again, not, we have very different interests and personalities, but it was really cool to see her be like, I'm going to do that. And she had the confidence and she made a plan and, and, and she did it, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. I have those kind of stories for all my kids. I'm not just singling her out, but, uh, mm -hmm. that was, yeah, that was really cool. And I, I remember many mornings being downstairs and just, you know, I, I take pictures and put them in the brotherhood group. Like I, I work out on these dark mats and just like the little, like a silhouette of a body laying on the ground where I'd done my yeah. last set and just pure sweat everywhere and have my daughter come down after and it hadn't dried yet. Or, you know, I tried to towel it up. She's like, your sweat daddy is all over the floor. You know, it's like, yeah, I'm kind of proud of that. So. <laughs> yeah. I'm proud of you for it. I've seen your sweat angels before. They're glorious. <laughs> sweat angels. That's it. So what, what is the fit father brotherhood meant to you? I know you've mentioned it many times, but I think it's an aspect of the program that, not a lot of people expect when they join the Fit Father Project to find you. I mean, you think you're getting like a meal plan and some workouts, and yeah. you certainly do. But then we have this amazing, like, on fire community of guys who are all going through their journeys all over the world, supporting one another. And you've been an active member, and I know you've played a big role in supporting a couple of the guys actually who've been on this podcast. Mm -hmm. So, what has that been a big factor in your success? And, and what does that mean to you? And, and, and what's that been like being a part of the Brotherhood? It has been. And again, it's, it's the type of thing you would ask me two and a half years ago. I'd have been like, you know, I do marketing. I'm in Facebook all day. I do. I've been in tons of groups and yeah, I don't need that stuff, you know, and I, I don't need, I'm, I'm a very, I'm a self-driven guy. I don't need accountability, mm -hmm. but that's so far from the truth. And so what I found in there at first was 
holy crap, man, I has anyone ever finished the Apex 10? This, who he's a, this guy's a sadist. Who's this Dr. Anthony? This is this is impossible. And you get people that have been in there for a few months. Like, actually, you're going to find that you're going to be just going from like 50 minutes to 45. I couldn't believe it. So that that initial support, like, you're not alone. There's actually people two steps ahead of you who have done this. And then when I had had some achievements, there was the idea of it's it's like a, a sense of pride to be able to post those sweat angels and be like, hey, yeah. for anyone who's starting Apex 10, I just broke 30 minutes or whatever those, you know, those thresholds mm-hmm. are. Because I was, I was proud of it, but I also knew it was going to motivate them the same way I had been motivated. And then there's a Sunday, you know, accountability post. And so, again, like at first, I'm like, Am I really going to do this? Like, who even who's going to read it? No one cares. But I'd get in there and I'd post, and it's like, what's coming up this week for challenges, and what cha- what what have you overcome in the past week? And these, and it kind of becomes a monotonous question. But every week's different, especially if you're traveling and the things I was at the time. I'm like, this is actually helpful. And then the unexpected benefit was people would comment and they'd be like, Hey, I, I see you're traveling to Orlando. Like, here's a great thing to do. And it was just like an actual community of people. And I was like, people are actually reading these. And then I, there was a guy named Todd and he's from Chicago. And uh, one time he asked if we could have a phone call and Todd strong. And I'd never actually, I'd never really recognized him in a group. He was kind of a silent, he was a lurker, you know, mm-hmm. but he was like, the exact same path as me at the exact same time. He wasn't posting, but I was. And he's like, I just had to call you and tell you, like you hit 200. So did I. And he was like in the golf industry. So we were actually to talk business. Um, And I was like, you know, you didn't even post. He's like, I know, but basically you were like my surrogate. Like I could see what you were doing. (laughs) And so now even, you know, even now two and a half years later, to be honest, I'm not putting Sunday accountability posts in there, but maybe I should, um, but I am constantly looking for opportunities to give back and, and give people feedback. Yeah. There's someone named Tony recently. He was a brand new member and he was like describing his life and his vices and the, the things that, that were holding him back. I'm like, dude, the, this almost to the same pounds, like you're a little older than I was, but like you are me two and a half years ago. And I said, I'm going to be actually recording a podcast. And he's all excited and he's like, I want to hear your story because it sounds just like mine. And I said, well, I'll let you know when it publishes, you know, but so yeah, it's, it's just, it's different, different than any community I've been in. You know, I've, I have my own communities, right. <laughs> like for engaged marriage and, and other things and they're cool, but um, there's something about, I guess it's just the, the similar, similar life paths that we're all in. Like we're yeah. all kind of dealing with family issues and work or business yeah. at the same time as our health. And it's just a very relatable group in that way. Yeah, I I feel the exact same way. I draw so much inspiration personally from that group too. It's and yeah, it's cool you seeing you in there too. I mean, you're you're not just the figurehead who's doing workout videos. Like you get in there and and you're commenting and you know. And I think that's kind of, in some way there's this like man, if maybe if I post this, Doctor Anthony will will comment. Like what a, that's, that's so cool. It's like so fulfilling because we you know, we draw so much inspiration from you and and the, the leadership that you provide. Likewise, right back at you. So my final question is, if you could give yourself some words of wisdom when you were starting out, or even a guy that maybe is is starting to get some momentum, thinks it's time to make a change, feels that little ember of a spark, but is not fully sure he can pull it off, what would you say to that man? What piece of advice would you give him? I would say, one, it's related to that point in his journey, but it's really probably the best life advice somebody gave me. And it's what made me actually take, take the leap away from full-time engineering to my own thing. And that is that with very few exceptions, there are no permanent decisions in life. So it's kind of like, what's the worst that can happen? Commit to doing this for a week, you know, maybe a day, a month at the most. And if, if you don't like it, you can always just not do it. <laughs> like, you know, so in my case, like, well, I could leave engineering. And if I'm no good at self-employment, I can just go get another engineering job. Like, why am I putting so much of my identity and my life and, and, and into this decision. I think the same is true with the health uh, journey. People want perfectionism and they want, they want like immediate results. And the reality is it takes work and it's not easy. And so I think not having this permanence that like, Oh man, if I, if I say I'm going to do this, I'll never be able to have a beer again, or I'll never be able to eat, you know, a piece of pizza again. It's like, no, like follow the plan for the, for that week, that month. And what, is very likely going to happen and you can decide for yourself. 
is that you're actually going to like it and you're going to like the results you're getting. And it's going to become this like flywheel of momentum and you're not going to want to deviate. You know, it's like you're, you're going to, because you, because you're getting so much benefit out of it. So I think that's, that's one thing is like, don't put, don't make it such a weighty decision. Like try it. There's tons and tons and tons of men and women who have been in front of you and have gotten results. So there's a very good chance you're also going to get results. Yeah, but don't don't like sweat it so much. Just like go try it. If you're I I can almost guarantee you if you do more than what you're doing now, you're going to feel a lot better than you do today. Yeah. Man, powerful advice. I'm going to take that to heart too. Especially when <laughs> overthink any overthinking anything. It's 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 so true, and it, it is amazing too that the the results that you do start to get and feeling better turns into intrinsic motivation, and then you get this. Like you call it a flywheel. That's exactly what it is. And, and it's obviously what's carried you nearly three years strong now. And Dustin, I'll just say this. I'm so proud of you and I'm so happy for you. Um, and I'm so excited for you um, at all the things that you're creating, all the things you figured out for yourself. And I know in my heart that your routine is yours. Like this is your system now. It's not, the, it's, it's the Fit Father Project, sure, but it's, it's the Dustin plan and you figure that out. And that's with you for life. And there's not a, it makes me so damn happy. You know, it's like, thank you for working this thing and being the kind of guy we built this program for and coming on here and sharing the wisdom. I can't wait to get this episode out to more guys. I think a lot of guys are going to relate, especially busy guys um, who, who you can do it all. You can have a thriving business. Yeah. You can make a big life change. You know, and Dustin, you're living proof of that. And we need more Dustin's out there. So thanks for being here, my friend. I appreciate this so much. I can't wait to get this episode out. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate you, Dr. Anthony. I appreciate everyone listening and people in the brotherhood, those who are just thinking about joining and they're, they're just kind of learning about this for the first time. Like I was when I heard you on a podcast a couple of years back. Yeah. Go, go take advantage of the free resources, give it a shot and see how it makes you feel. And if it makes you feel good, then maybe you want a full structured plan and a community and, and all the things that have helped me so much. Thanks, Dustin. Appreciate you. Uh, we'll see you on the next episode of Fit Father Project Podcast. Thanks for being everyone.